happy Australian Father's Day. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Happy Australian Father's Day to you two as well. Tell your kids you get an extra day. Um, okay, so <laughs> as Fauzi has said, there are lots of books out there for parents, lots of books out there for, for mothers. Was it a personal experience that made you realise that there was a bit of a gap in the market here for dads? Yeah, I think so. Because I think in the build-up uh, to the birth of my first child, I read a few books that were for dads, but mm. it felt like there were thousands for mums sort of preparing for every possible uh, thing that would come up but for dads it was very much like there were sort of instruction manuals mm. for how to operate a kid mm. they would just do this do this change the nappy like this um, and that's how you do it so I, re I read all those and I thought well I've, I've got this thing sus this is going to be easy uh, and then I had a kid and obviously it, it turns your life upside down yeah. you don't have a clue what you're doing you're feeling all these things that you've never felt before um, and you think well I wasn't prepared for this mm. at all um, and it's only when I spoke to my friends who were dads as well and I mentioned the things that I was, I was scared about um, or, you know, that I didn't expect. And they'd go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I could have told you that, but I, they never did. And no one did. So I was thinking, I need to, I need to tell people about this. I need to um, sort of tell people about the, the, the stuff that I'm feeling as a dad mm. and the stuff that all of my friends talk about as well. well let's... Um, and it just so happens that luckily some, some of my friends are... are comedians so yeah. uh, they can make it funny as well well with the birth for example it used to be the case that dads wouldn't even make it into the room but now they are becoming more involved but sometimes i think there's confusion about exactly what their role is during the birth <laughs> yeah i was confused mm. um i didn't really know what my role was and i think the thing is you haven't really got one but when you you're do. in that room. I would disagree, George. I think you do, as a dad, have an important role to play as a support person. Well, that's it, isn't it? You're, you're there um, to... I, I, feel, I think the thing is, as a dad, you feel a bit useless in the moment. And I wish somebody had told me that because no one's expecting anything from you. You know, they've got all the medical stuff covered, absolutely. Um, you're just there to support your partner, mm. be there for them. Put your hand out if they want to break your hand that's fine you don't say anything you don't complain you just stay there and, and be strong and even if you're panicking thinking this is the most mental experience i've ever gone through you just mm. you just have a look on your face that says everything's cool mm. and then in those early months and even early years there are certainly some lessons to be learned for for mums and dads and, and any parent as well i was reading in your book that you had to force yourself to control yourself at the park oh well yes well when you go you go to the park as a kid and you know it's fine and then you go maybe 20 years without going to the park and then you return as a dad and you're thrust right back into the playground politics, but you're an adult, so you've got to play by the rules of an adult. So, I mean, I've, I've I mentioned in the book, I've, I've never punched anyone in my entire life, but the closest I've ever come was when I first took my, my son to the park. And the only thing that was stopping me from punching this person is that he was seven years old uh, and, I, and I couldn't. Well, but I, I, it's... It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place where there are no rules. It's, mm. it's feral. It's Lord of the Flies. And you've, got to, you've just got to try and, and slot in and, and uh, you know, act like a responsible adult and control your emotions. Yeah. But it's a, it's a terrifying place. I wonder if it comes down to a lack of preparation or a lack of information out there, which, of course, your book is trying to go along with. So that how house. can dads or parents in general be more prepared for the birth and for those early months and years? Well, I mean, number one thing is, is, is buy this fella. Oh, yes, of um, course, naturally. But, <laughs> but number two, <laughs> the other thing is, is talk to each other. Like, I think uh, blokes just, just don't talk to one another enough. Mm. And it's only when I spoke to my friends that you suddenly, you stop feeling all of the guilt that you sometimes feel as a parent, mm. like you're not doing it right. You realise that they're worried about all the things that you're worried about as well. And that none of us really know what we're doing, but we're all learning and we're all getting on with it. And... I think, yeah, if, if we all just like talk to each other a little bit more and support each other a little bit more, it's so much easier. Mm. And I mean, I always think as well, whenever I'm worried about whether I'm doing a very good job at being a dad, I think about some other people who I know who are dads. And I think, well, if they can do it, surely. <laughs> I'm not doing so bad.